step up. We have two similar stations here. There's three steps in this process. We're going to first drill holes in the log. Okay. You'll then inoculate with these fun little plungers. Right? And then you will wax the, the holes that you just filled so that the spawn doesn't fall out, essentially. All right? um, and there's a few sort of nuances as we go along. And some things to think about when you're getting into growing. Okay? So, and the plan here is basically to have fun and make as much of a mess as we can so that the hotel remembers that what happened to the farmer during the How big is your bed? Okay, I'll get into that. Um, I will mention this again. Is that a personal question? There's, there's way more details that you're going to remember from Sorry. this experience about like bit size and this and that and that. We'll mention a website. If you walked in, there was a bookmark on, on the chairs and we have plenty more to hand out. There's a website there and there's growing guides on there that will go through all these steps. So don't expect to remember everything. There's a lot of details. What's the website? Five years just to get all of them together. All right? Yeah, thanks. So, what's the website? I will tell you again, but it is, um, the easiest way is it's blogs.cornell.edu backslash mushrooms. So when we're drilling holes in the locks, what we're going to do is we're going to aim for about four inches between holes. All right. And then we're going to rotate the log, and we're going to start our next row of holes about two inches from the previous hole. And what we're going to try to do is offset the holes so we have kind of a diamond pattern in our log. It's not that important to be perfect. It's kind of one of these personality tests. You'll see how kind of anal attentive you are about your perfect pattern. Okay? I tend to go for speed over perfection. The idea is just to get an even spread of spawn through the log. Okay, so you could do more holes. You could do less holes. Honestly, though, if you do a hole every inch, you're probably not going to have a, a faster spawn run or quicker mushrooms or anything like that. So supposedly the four-inch gap is sort of the most efficient use of spawn. All right. Um, and you really have two options. So if you're, what we usually recommend is if you're inoculating under 100 logs, like backyard, home scale, that sort of thing. A uh, regular corded drill is going to be a tool of choice, and this is mostly because of cost. Um, so I'll just show, you know, we, what we have on here is a, a 5 sixteenths drill bit and a little stopper so we don't go too deep. Right? About an inch down the, the drill bit. Okay? So when I use the power drill, it's really important to use a corded drill because if you use a battery drill, you'll go through about two or three logs before you have to change out batteries. Okay, so power is really pretty key. Um, when we look at uh, through this whole process, what was the sort of time suck? Um, drilling with this was actually one of the, the largest time sucks. Okay, so when we looked at commercial production over a hundred logs, you can think about how most of our time is spent inoculating logs. People started asking how can we speed up this process. Okay, so enter the, the angle grinder. Okay, so it's an angle grinder. It's a, a common tool if you're doing construction work. Often it has a, a flat blade on it for sanding wood or cutting pipe or something like that. Um, they're going to cost about the same as a drill. If you get into commercial production, you're probably going to get an angle grinder at some point. In addition to that cost, maybe $100 for this tool. You have to get this little adapter. Okay, and this bit, a specialized bit for shiitake production. So this whole setup is about fifty dollars. Okay, so the reason we say this is sort of for your back scale is because most people have a drill, and this isn't a very expensive uh, purchase for getting a little stuff. This is a little bit of an investment. Okay, uh, just a bit. I think it's about eight dollars. Um, the, this whole setup is available from a few producers, and again, that's on our website. One of the ones we like to promote is Field and Forest, which is also where you can buy Spawn. There's also one called Mycosource, which has this little, this little setup. You can also buy these bits and put them in a, in a drill. All right? The reason we like this, and maybe it'll be self-evident, is because this is about 10 times faster than, than this. All right? So we're going to log Better spray of chips, which is really <laughs> <laughs> Okay. That's a 716th bit. You probably can't see too well in the log, but here's my first roll of holes 
Who's the second one? It's a little bit uh, smaller than uh, the first set, right? This bit is actually designed for um, for Dallas. Okay, so in addition to the sawdust spawn, you can get it in Dallas form. Okay. Again, if you're under 100 logs, you're just getting started. These tools that allow you to put the sawdust in cost about 30 to 40 dollars a piece. So it's this upscale of, of cost. All right. If you don't want to do that, or you want to try this on for size, you buy the dowels, and it's as simple as hammering in. I think that bit is actually a little small. All right. But the hammer is again something we all have. Right. So for years, I used the regular drill and and dowel spawn and just hammered it in. Um, the dowel spawn is a little more expensive. So for, for like 30 logs, you're gonna spend a little more money. But again, you gotta kinda gotta make those choices as you think about your scale. When you're doing the sawdust, all right, you're gonna make sure that the substrate, uh, the, the mycelium here stays nice and fluffy. And basically this just creates a nice little pellet of spawn, okay? And you're gonna fill your holes that way. So you move down your log, and again, when you get into sawdust and this tool and everything, it actually is a lot faster than you know, lining up your dowels and hammering everyone in. Okay. Again, if you're doing under 100 logs, speed is not as much of a concern. Trust me, when you're doing 300 or 400 logs in a spring, every second counts. All right. And it's good every once in a while to check to check your work with your finger to make sure the spawn is tight in there. You don't want it to be really packed in. If you could put your finger in the hole, you may not have put enough spawn in there because it may not have filled up enough in the in your little dispenser. You can always add a little bit more. The biggest thing we tell new growers is not to worry about a lot of things, okay? Like don't worry if all your holes aren't perfectly drilled, it's gonna be fine. If you don't have full spawn in every single hole, it's probably gonna be fine. It's amazing how low the chances of failure are in this in this process. Okay? Alright, so I get a lot of questions of, well, did I, did I do enough holes? Do I need to count my holes? So all these little things that I wouldn't worry about. Okay. So we have drilling, we have inoculation. I've obviously only done a, a row just to show you, but you're going to go through your whole log all right, before you move down to the station. One thing I forgot, please don't try to drill into any uh, areas where branches were, any knots, any deformities. Your, build, your drill bit will get stuck, you'll probably hurt your wrist. You keep to the nice clean parts of the tree. Okay, you can just go around these little knots. Okay, so the last thing is wax. This is cheese wax, so the same cheese you're using to, to wrap rinds when you're still when you're doing hard cheese. Um, the only real reason we use cheese wax is because it is a food grade wax and if we're getting into uh, organic certification or anything, it's sort of the preferred one. You could use paraffin, you could use beeswax, there's all sorts of possible you know, combinations of wax. Some people claim that when you put just beeswax on, the animals might come and eat it off, uh, which can happen, or it might crack off in the winter months or something like that. So beeswax is, or excuse me, cheese wax is actually a mix of the two waxes. And so you get a nice coating. And what you're trying to do is just keep the spawn from, from leaving your log. All right, so just a little dab with a paintbrush is really all you need. And this should be a little hotter. When it hits the log, it should, it should sizzle a little bit. But it's actually pretty fine. And that's all we're doing is we're covering those holes up, okay? Some growers really like to uh, cover the ends of their logs. They'll actually do a little dip. Uh, we did a study in Cornell that showed that there was really no significant improvement of, of sort of moisture holding or anything by dipping the ends. So we don't actually recommend that. It's just a waste of, of wax, which actually out of all these materials is probably the most expensive uh, consumable part of this. This is really cheap. This bag will do about 30 logs. Um, and if you think about that, that's less than a dollar a log. Um, in terms of the cost, uh, pretty cheap. This is by far a lot more expensive in terms of an input. Any questions on the inoculation process?